thousands of destroyed houses, broken roads, hundreds of blown up bridges. I'm not even talking about energy facilities. All these will have been restored and rebuilt. What will it look like? Who will finance these projects? And what will be the conditional Marshall Plan for Ukraine? I'm Alexey Matsuka and in this video let's figure it out together how the world plans to restore Ukraine after the war and how long it will take. How much money will be needed? President Zelensky has already announced at least a trillion dollars, but how to organize it all? And in it what time frame? In Kyiv, the recovery plan was divided into three stages. The first is the rapid restoration of infrastructure even while the hostilities continue. At the second stage, a detailed inventory of losses will be carried out. And the third stage just assumes the full restoration of Ukraine, including structural changes. And this is worth looking into the detail. First, a system is being developed that allows partner countries to take patronage over specific regions, cities and enterprises. Already now we are creating a special patronage system, a system that will allow advanced countries and companies from all over the world to take patronage over the restoration of Ukrainian regions, cities, industries and enterprises, in order not just to restore them, but to show that the free world and conscious states are always stronger than anything tyranny and any aggression. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. A draft of such a map when foreign states are assigned to restore the most affected areas already exists. So Germany was assigned to rebuild the Chernihiv region, Canada to the Sumer region, the USA and Turkey to the Kharkiv region, Belgium will restore the Mykolaiv region, Sweden and the Netherlands, Kherson, Switzerland, Odessa. Norway assigned itself to Kiravograd, Austria to Zaporizhia. It's noteworthy that several countries were assigned to Donbass at once. The Czech Republic, Finland and Sweden, they should help rebuild the Lugansk region. Poland and Italy, Donetsk. But how to organize it all. According to the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and the head of the European Commission Ursula von der Leyen, it should be the famous parable, not a fish, a fishing rod. It's the program should include not only humanitarian aid, but also the opportunity to rebuild the country's economy. That is, according to the Europeans, we should talk about a new Marshall Plan. Although we should always be careful when making historical comparisons, what is at stake here is nothing less than the creation of a new Marshall Plan for the 21st century. Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission. Let's go back in the history and beat. Let me remind you, the Marshall Plan was an American initiative designed to help the countries of Europe to recover from the Second World War. The official name of the program was the European Recovery Program. Aid was provided to 17 countries, including Germany, and in three years from 1948 to 1951, the United States allocated about 13 billion dollars. At the current exchange rate, this is about 120 billion. It's not worth it that the Soviet Union refused to help and moreover Moscow actually banned Poland, Czechoslovakia and other countries of the socialist camp from participation in this plan. The Marshall Plan is the largest and probably the most effective aid project in the history. And with it, its framework in addition of material assistance and this is, was a 19 package technologies were transferred, new management decisions were created. That is, the emphasis was not only on helping, it was important to restart the economy. Marshall's plan was like oil in an engine, but not the fuel, allowing a car to run that would otherwise stall. Charles Mayer, Harvard historian. As a result, the period from 1948 to 1952 was the time of the fastest economic growth in the history of Europe. 
And if we are talking now about the development of a similar plan for Ukraine, here we are also talking about not plunging holes, but completely changing the economy. The model was proposed by the British. They established a special agency under the auspices of the European Union to coordinate specific projects and throw to the allocate assistance in the form of grants, not loans. For each project, a separate estimate and its own reporting. And apparently, the EU agrees to such a model. The head of the European Commission called it a single platform for the restoration of Ukraine which would combine financial assistance from the US, the IMF, the World Bank, the J20 and individual countries. We propose to create a platform because there are many initiatives, many who want to help, but all this needs to be organized. The platform should be Ukrainian, but convened by the European Commission so that we can help determine the general direction of movement, so that investors clearly understand what the plan in which we are investing is. Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission. The idea here is that one level to unite the leaders of different states and the other to create a coordination group, a kind of think tank. On the third, teams that would work in specific areas. And if there are those who want to join such a structure, they even say that Boris Johnson himself thought of heading it and attracting investments and assistance for Ukraine under his own name, then there is still no clarity how to form a budget and how much money will you need in the end. The expert opinions are indeed different. In July, the World Bank announced an amount of $350 billion, which would be enough to rebuild Ukraine. However, most recently, the bank's president, David Malpass, said that the amount was outdated, expenses had increased due to Russian strikes on Ukrainian energy facilities. At the end of November, the European Commission estimated the damage to Ukraine from the war at $600 billion. Again, during this time, the figure also grew. Ukraine's calculations and this amount was announced at the conference in Lugano, Switzerland. Up to $7.5 billion will be needed. And at the end of November, President Zelensky called the amount of the $1 trillion. Next, a question arises. Whatever the amount, how to finance it all? It is logical to assume that the main role in the restoration of Ukraine will be played by the European Union and the United States. But how the financial burden will be distributed on Western partners is still an open question. In the United States, in 1945, shortly before the implementation of the Marshall Plan, there was complete financial well-being and the economy was at the peak. Today, the United States is still the world's first economy, but the situation is not so cloudless. Inflation is running hot. Energy prices, and correspondingly the price of everything else, are expected to soar. Major banks are warning that a major recession is on the horizon. From the Newsweek publication. It may be even more difficult for the European Union to act since this issue will require to consent of, of all member countries. And when it comes to a potential trillion dollars, unity may not be so strong. For example, when the topic of providing Ukraine with a much smaller amount, 18 billion euros, recently came up, Prime Minister Viktor Orban said that they would not support such a decision, because they say does not want the EU to become a community of debtor states. One proposal says that we should use the budgets of the EU member states to take out new loans together and use that money to give to Ukraine. We are not in favor of this because we do not want the European Union to become a community of indebted states instead of a community of cooperating member states. 
Viktor Orban, Prime Minister of Hungary. In this regard, it seems absolutely logical to decide that Russia itself and not European and American taxpayers should pay for the restoration of Ukraine. In particular, Kyiv regularly offers to use Moscow's funds frozen in the West. This proposal is also supported by the European Commission. Russia and its oligarchs have to compensate Ukraine for the damage and cover the costs for rebuilding the country. And we have the means to make Russia pay. We have blocked 300 billion euros of the Russian central bank reserves and we have frozen 19 billion euros of Russian oligarchs' money. Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission. It's not possible to act quickly here. There are legal difficulties, Olaf Scholz recently said. But the EU is working on a legal procedure for the confiscation of Russian assets. In my opinion, this is a matter of fairness, not only to freeze assets, but also to confiscate them in order to make this money available for the restoration of Ukraine. Charles Michel, president of the European Council. The third way, which does not exclude the first two, is to attract investments. The conversation here is simple. At some point, when the war is over, Ukraine will become an incredibly attractive object for investing money. But the best conditions will be given to those who come now. The economy, despite the war and all the challenges, has a high investment attractiveness given the interests of private sector. Recovery starts with investment. Denis Shmihal, Prime Minister of Ukraine. The government of Ukraine has created a list of five attractive and safe sectors of the economy, including the military, industrial complex and IT. The West is asked to become a guarantor of investment security. But there is also a lot of homework to be done, because insurance should be not only against military risk, but also against corruption. The insecurity of foreign investors in our country is a huge obstacle to the development of Ukraine in recent years. Corruption, lack of transparency of actions in the country, illegal schemes of work – this is what the parliament needs to work on. If the system changes, we can count on a quick recovery. Maxim Oreshchak, analyst at the Center for Exchange Technologies. By the way, that is why the idea has now appeared both Berlin and Brussels are voicing it to create an international monitoring body to fight corruption as part of a program to restore Ukraine. Another question, when should we start rebuilding ourselves and how long can recover take? Restoring European cities after the Second World War began somewhere in a year, where in three. And the recovery lasted an average of 10-15 years. Approximately such terms are called today by the Ukrainian government too. We have a lot of work ahead of us to keep the economy running during the war, to restore the economy, to build it better than it was before. Indeed, this is a period of loss, but also a period of opportunity, because we understand that we will rebuild the sins that are lost in a better way than we had them before. Denis Shmihal, Prime Minister of Ukraine. Volodymyr Zelensky expects that the bulk of the restoration work will be carried out before 2030. Recently, he even submitted a DESA bid to host Expo 30, which was designed by the world-famous Zaha Hadid architects. Well, if we rebuild the country, then we should immediately start using the green technologies. Such suggestions come from Berlin. The Ministry of Economy of Germany believes that Ukraine has a chance to build the entire comprehensively modern infrastructure based on green energy. For example, instead of Soviet-built buildings with poor thermal isolation, you can immediately build houses based on energy-saving technologies. And they want to build critically important facilities, including schools with reliable bomb shelters right away. Yes, this is all albeit grandiose, but plans. And people are faced with the problem of how to build and restore something right now without waiting for the Marshall Plan. And it's not easy, but it's not too early to think about the future either.
plans, schedules, specific ideas, all this should be developed now in order not to waste time when the war is still going on. Well, what are the forecasts about the timing of the war and what are the scenarios? I will definitely tell you in the new videos three times a week on this channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.